Hey everybody, welcome to Board Game Heaven. My name is Raymond and in this episode I'm taking a look at Harry Potter Hogwarts Battle Defense Against the Dark Arts, which is a two-player competitive deck builder game by The Op. So I'll open up the box and show you what's inside, I'll set up a game, explain the rules, and then I'll give you my final thoughts. Harry Potter Hogwarts Battle Defense Against the Dark Arts. So. This is the box. It's a very nice looking box. It has a sleeve over it as well. This is what is in the box. So plenty of cards and tokens, of course. It's a deck builder. So uh, let's open that up. I can't do it like I regularly do because of the sleeve. So I'll just have to take off the shrink wrap at <laughs> this time entirely. All right, there we go. And then Take this sleeve, which is really nicely done. You see, it has the uh, logo in the middle there, and when you slide it off, there's uh, a logo underneath as well. It's rather tight, though, so I'll have to do this carefully. All right, and then the back of this box is just simply this. So it looks like kind of like a suitcase, and then inside the box, here we go, is a board with a start uh, position and a stunned position over there. So we have the classroom, the library, uh, banished and hexes. So I guess that's where you put cards. So we have this board. Then we have the rules, with the overview and the objective of the game list first. So there you go, that's how you set up the game. So right, that's where all the tokens and the cards go. Preparing for the game. And you've got some ally cards as well. The gameplay is explained there. All right, so this is all gameplay. So it's just uh, about 10 pages of rules and setup. So that's not too bad. That should be easy enough to learn and teach. Then there's some cards here. It's uh, with a thin rubber band. We'll carefully take off. Really nicely illustrated Gryffindor and Slytherin and Hufflepuff. There's two Gryffindors there. And are they different? Uh, no, they seem to be the same. So I hope that is correct. <laughs> oh, and on the back, oh, I see, right. So they are double-sided. So you can have two uh, Hufflepuffs, two Slytherin, and if you turn them around, you get two Gryffindors and two Ravenclaws. There we go. Then we have the cool uh, metal tokens that are also in the uh, co uh, cooperative deck building game. So that's really nice. We have five of those. We have a bag of pre-punched tokens nonetheless. Oh wow. Well that's, that's fantastic. Don't have to punch the tokens. That's really cool. So you got your money, the coins, your hearts for your health. And these uh, Ravenclaw, Hufflepuff, etc., and, and, and these uh, lightning tokens. So that's very cool. It's just all ready, punched in there. And of course, all of the cards in here, several packs of them. So, with the, your starter hand of cards, starter spells, and then these hexes and these cards as well so all kinds of different cards in there so that's what's in the box let's set up a game to set up the game both players first pick one of the four houses and its corresponding standee and all of these cards are double-sided with a different house on the back so both players can if they want to choose the same house each player takes their starting deck indicated with the starter banner at the bottom of these cards and picks one of three starter allies, the owl, the toad or the cat. There are two of each in the game, so each player can choose the same starter ally pet. Once you've picked a card, shuffle all of these together and that will be your starting deck. Place the game board in the middle of the table and keep the health tokens, the attack tokens 
and the influence tokens close at hand. There are also five stun tokens to indicate whenever a player gets stunned. Place the eight book item cards in the library. Shuffle the 31 hex cards and put them face down in the hexes area. Each player places their chosen standee on the starting spot of the board. Take all the remaining cards, shuffle them and reveal the top four into the classroom. Now you're ready to play, let's explain the rules. Before I can explain the rules, I need to talk about the different kinds of cards that are in the game. First off, you've got spell cards and item cards, and they come in four different houses and in a neutral color. The icon in the top left and the color of the border will indicate to which house these spells or items belong. The card will say spell or item in purple or yellow. They have a name and an effect. And in the bottom, they will also have a cost to purchase these cards. Cards that are affiliated with a house will have an additional effect. A player can trigger these effects whenever they are either of the indicated house themselves or if they have an ally in play of that indicated house. Some cards will give you attack points, influence points or health points or they will tell you to draw or discard cards or to banish cards, etc. There are also many ally cards in the game and they are indicated with a turquoise ally banner and they too can be either neutral or affiliated to one of the four houses. When played, these cards stay in play until they are somehow removed and they will give you a action that you can take once per turn. Finally, there are 31 hex spells and 8 book items and they are set apart in separate decks next to the game board. Books can always be purchased, but there is a limit of eight of these cards in play. Hexes have a negative effect that will resolve immediately when you have them. And finally, your house card will state which house you are affiliated to and they will have a turn overview on the card. At the start of your turn, check if you have any hex cards in your hand. If you do, these need to be resolved first. You'll never start with hex cards at the start of the game, of course, but later certain effects and spells will make you draw a hex card from the hex pile. When you do, they are put in your discard pile only to be shuffled back into your draw pile at a later turn. Sometimes you'll need to draw a hex from the hex pile and take it into your hand immediately and that means you also need to resolve it at that time. Usually, hexes will have an effect that lasts your turn, so simply put it into your play area to remind yourself that you are now hexed and you cannot draw extra cards in case of this bad bogey hex. Then you can play any cards from your hand and resolve its effects. So ally cards, for example, are simply played and they will stay in play until they are somehow removed. Allies will have a certain ability that you can use. So in this case, the cat will say once per turn, if you played at least three spells, you gain an extra damage token. Aside from ally cards, I can also play items or spells, and I simply play them and resolve their effects. So in this case, I would gain one of these attack tokens. My two Alohomora cards would gain me two influence tokens. And lastly, my cauldron here makes me choose to gain either one influence or one health. Now, since I am already at my maximum starting health, I can only gain one of these influence tokens, which I will take. I have not played three spells, so my ally ability does not trigger. And then I take all my damage tokens and resolve those. So I deal one damage to my opponent and put his token back one step on the track. My three influence will allow me to buy a card from the classroom or the library. In this case, I could buy the Butterbeer card since it costs two, or I could get a library book. So I will take this card and any cards I buy will be put into my discard pile. If a card tells you to banish a card, then it is removed from play. So for example, this Peruvian Instant Darkness Powder card would gain me two influence tokens and I may banish a card from the classroom. So when that happens, I simply pick one of these cards, take it away and put it in the banished area. 
whenever a hex is banished, it is also placed in the banished area, although I set them apart so they can be sorted at the end of the game more easily. Note that library cards can never be banished, they will always be returned to the library stack. So since I bought this card, these three tokens are spent, and at the end of your turn you simply take all of your items and spells and you put them in your discard pile, and any allies remain in play until they are somehow removed. Hexes are also put in your discard pile. After that, you draw back up to five cards, and whenever your draw pile is empty and you need to draw any extra cards, shuffle your discard pile and that will form a new draw pile. Keep in mind that any played card during your turn only go to the discard pile at the end of your turn because sometimes you will need to draw cards during your turn and if you can't draw any cards at that moment then your current discard pile will be shuffled and form your new draw pile and you draw from that and any cards that you have played that turn will only go to the discard pile at the end of your turn so they don't get shuffled in right away. Whenever a card from the classroom, so if is you're buying a card from the classroom, banished, you can take that in any into other your way, discard pile, it gets immediately card replaced, replaces the empty spot, and buy that card next if you have enough influence left. Players alternate turns until one of the two players has lost enough health to become stunned. So this is your final spot where you still got one health left. And if you take damage here, you are stunned. When that happens, you take one of these stunned tokens and put them on your house card. Whenever this happens, the game is reset. Both players put their standees back on the starting position. They take all their cards in their hand, in their discard pile, all their allies that are in play, and they shuffle them all back together with their draw pile to form a new draw pile and they draw five new cards and start a new round. Players keep playing until one of both players has three stun tokens on their house card and they will have lost the game and the other player will be the winner. And that's all you need to know on how to play Harry Potter Hogwarts Battle Defense Against the Dark Arts. Let's go to my final thoughts. So my final thoughts on Harry Potter Hogwarts Battle Defense Against the Dark Arts by The Opt. It's quite a long title. Well, first of all, let me talk about the uh, components and the presentation and the artwork. So um, the components are good. The cards are of a normal thickness. They're not too thin. They're not super thick either. Uh, they have a linen finish. Um, because this is a deck builder though, I would recommend sleeving it because you will be shuffling and handling these cards a whole lot and that will just, you know, wear. So uh, do sleeve the cards. Um, I think I, I always like to do that with my deck builders, but basically the, the quality of the components is good. The board is nice, the uh, standees are nice, the tokens are nice, and they come pre-punched, so that's a, a bonus. And uh, I really love these uh, metal little um, stun tokens that you use. Uh, that's a pretty cool touch, and you will find those in the other Hogwarts Battle deck building game as well. You may know that one that is a cooperative uh, deck building game where I believe two to four players play against the game. So a lot of that you will find in this as well. This is basically the two-player competitive version of that where you test each other uh, so you're defending against the dark arts. It's basically you're following a class here uh, thematically. So that brings me to the theme, which is of course Harry Potter, and I really enjoy Harry Potter, I like the movies, and what you will see here are of course all the characters and items from those movies, and uh, if you like those, if you like the IP, you will certainly like this as well. There is a lot of stuff that you will recognize in here. Uh, I also like uh, the fact that all of these spells have these glyphs on them, which are basically the movement that you make with the wizard's wand to cast these spells. So that's a nice touch as well. So there's not a whole lot of artwork involved. It's mostly pictures from the movies uh, with the items that you find, like the chocolate frog and such, uh, except for these spell glyphs. But that's okay. I, th I find that very thematic and, and it looks nice. 
I also think that the cards are very well made. It's very clear what they are. They are color coded. The text is clear. The cost is clear. So that's uh, well done as well. So then gameplay, uh, it's basically a standard deck builder that you may have already played in the form of Hero Realms or Star Realms or Cthulhu Realms or what, what have you. And uh, so it, it plays uh, basically the same with the difference that this is cut up into shorter rounds where you've got basically seven hit points and you're moving around the board, you know, taking damage and then healing up again, etc. So that does take a while, but the rounds are relatively short because at seven damage you're stunned. You take one of these tokens and you need to stun your opponent three times in order to win. So that can take from three up to five rounds which each take about 20 to 30 minutes depending on how well uh, you know the rules already um so a game could if you're fast and you know the rules and you're constantly winning uh three rounds could be about an hour up to two maybe two and a half hours if you're, you know, you're going back and forth and um yeah so compared to other deck builders it's a bit longer and it feels like you're playing multiple games. So you could ask yourself, is this the, the shorter rounds with the less hit points uh, kind of a rule that they just made so you keep on playing it for longer periods of time? Um, I don't know, uh, maybe, because uh, you're a regular deck builder, you play it once and you win or you lose, and maybe you want to play again, or best out of three. And this basically already has best out of five built in. So after one game, which could take, like I said, uh, about two hours, you might not want to play the game uh, directly again. Um, but it doesn't, in my opinion, overstay its welcome. If you've played an entire game, and even if it did take five rounds, I find it is still a lot of fun. And uh, yeah, I enjoyed that a lot. The down part, though, is that it is strictly for two players, so you cannot play this with three or four players. That's a bit of a shame. Um, another down part is the language dependency. This game is absolutely language dependent. There's text on all the cards, so you will have to have a firm grasp of the English language. This is not language independent. Another point that I did like about the game is the added hexes. So that's something that was rather new to me in uh, these deck builders that you can add bad cards to someone's deck uh, basically that that have a negative effect whenever you draw them and you have to put them in play you can't uh, discard them you can't um, get rid of them uh, easily you really have to find another spell to destroy uh, one of your hexes so that's nice that's an added uh, layer in there so all in all i really enjoyed this game i'm absolutely giving it a Two thumbs up, so that was Harry Potter Hogwarts Battle Defense Against Dark Arts by The Op. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe, and if you hit the bell icon, then you'll also get a notification whenever I upload a new video. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time on Board Game Heaven.